Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Poland Daily Travel. We are here in the studio in beautiful downtown Warsaw. We've been on the road. We've been all over northern Poland in the last uh, few uh, couple of weeks, and those shows I hope you enjoyed. Uh, but today we're in the studio, and we have Nicholas Richardson. You remember Nick Richardson. You see him on Poland Daily almost every day, probably every day. No, actually, probably every day if you tune in, yes. You do history. Do history. Every do, day, right? Do, we do yeah. an episode. We've done like 500 episodes. I know, it's incredible. It's got 500, 500 episodes. episodes. You and me, yeah, more or less. You've done about the same. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you also, you're reading the news. I'm reading the news. And I would like to bring in from Tallinn in Estonia. Yes, folks, it really does exist, Estonia. Harold Gore <laughs> von Kursk. <laughs> How are you, Harold? I'm doing mighty fine. Estonia has reported only six cases in the last week, so we've managed to kill the bloody virus. There's no virus in Estonia. Of course, no. this show people will be watching a bit down the road, so, yeah, okay. unless I fit these episodes in first. But anyway... You never had it. You never had it bad in Estonia, anyway, did you? Only for a one-week period, which panicked the government into actually correctly locking down the country very early, uh, and in a hard way for two months. But it was the right thing because there are no cases. There's only six people left in hospital, only one of whom is on ventilation. So essentially, the government did what it needed to, much like Andrew Cuomo managed the virus in New York, one of the you know, few states which is truly effective. Mm. Okay. Yeah, well, New York, I don't want to get into this, but New York actually leads the world by a substantial amount in deaths per million. It's like 1,800 or 1,900 per million. But never mind. I don't want to go into that. They've come from there to where they are now. Their yeah. problem is extraordinary. Anyway, let's talk, let's talk about, I don't want to talk about uh, virus. I want to talk about not virus. And I want to talk about, uh, listen, you live in Tallinn. How long have you been there? It's our neighbor. It's Eight our neighbor months. to the north. How long? Eight months. Eight months. And uh, why, why should we want to visit Tallinn? Give us three or four things. Take it away. It's a beautiful, modern city, which is often falsely portrayed in some of their tourist brochures having this glorious old town, but actually the old town, I would suggest, is the least interesting place to visit in Tallinn. Uh, there are so many modern bars, cafes. There's a beautiful museum called the Fotografiska Museum, which uh, originally came from Sweden, and they brought the concept to Tallinn. Uh, I suggest that's one of the f uh, first places people should visit. We have fantastic hotels. There's a Hilton Hotel just two blocks away from where I live. And it's a modern, fast-moving city. The population is well-educated. Uh, most Estonians, let's say under the age of 35, speak fluent English which is uh, rare, I think, for Eastern and Central Europe. And the people are extremely polite and friendly, unlike my German confrères, where I lived for nearly 20 years. Mm -hmm. You find the people a lot more friendly in Central Europe, particularly in that particular place, than you do in Berlin, which is where you were born, right? You were born yes. in Berlin. Am I yes. correct in that? Yes. Assumptions? Yes. Yeah. But you grew up in Canada, of course. So you've got, you're a, you're a what, what they call one of them cosmopolitan fellas. Perhaps. I'm a hybrid of some sort. You're a hybrid. That's yes. scary. You are looking a bit like Rutger Hauer today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, poor Rutger passed away uh, last year. Yes. He's a good man. Blade Runner, right? Yes, I, I mean, unfortunately, he was never able to top that performance because it was simply iconic, so memorable. I mean, the final scene where he offers his reflections on an unfeeling universe as he's about to die. Yeah, he wrote that, you know. He wrote those lines. 
He, Rutger Hauer wrote those famous lines because I, I interviewed him. You interviewed him, And didn't asked you? him about it, yeah. Mm. And later he called me and we became kind of mates. You know, he wanted me to help him with some film initiative thing. So sometimes when you're a journalist, you get to meet. He was, he was a very interesting guy, but very daunting. Uh, also, because you remember all those roles he played, and he was, he's kind of like that. But a hell of a nice guy, actually. Very in intelligent guy. Yeah, the most famous Dutch man of the 20th century. At any rate, so, all right, we're going to come back in the next episode. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you tomorrow night. We'll have more with Harold von Kursk in Tallinn and Nicholas Richardson, who said nothing in this episode, and that's the way we like it <laughs> in the studio. He looks good, but he said nothing. Nick, would you like to say something? Say, good, say goodbye to the folks. Goodbye, folks. Thank you for watching. Watch again, and I'll say more. Excellent. That's what he does best. See you on the next episode. Bye.